name Adam Jesko from ProudMoney.com. News today from the Wall Street Journal that a group of big banks are banding together to create a new digital wallet that would compete with Apple Pay and PayPal and the other digital wallets out there. Supposedly, this new wallet would be easier to use, but it seems like the real goal behind it is just to kind of splinter the uh, digital wallet market even further and stop Apple from gaining even more power in financial services. So the banks in this partnership are Chase, Capital One, Bank of America, Wells Fargo, US Bank, PNC, and Truist, and they are working through the uh, company called Early Warning System which actually is a company that they already own together. It's the same company that created Zelle, the money transfer service that the uh, banks all have an interest in. And so this new digital wallet coming from the same place as Zelle, and it supposedly is going to be available in the second half of this year. So the article is pretty vague as to how this new digital wallet, which doesn't have a name yet, would actually work, but it seems that the banks involved think that one of the attractions would be that you would not have to input your information from all your different cards, credit cards and debit cards into this wallet and then use them through the wallet. Instead, the banks would have that information and you would just be identified as to who you were and then they would be able to supply that information to the app, which would cut down on the work for you and also supposedly cut down on the work in terms of there being any uh, fraud or you know numbers input incorrectly, all of that kind of stuff. But when you actually go to make a purchase, the article suggests that maybe you would use your email address as identifying information and then all of the cards that are within the system would then show up and you could choose which one to use for that particular transaction. It's got to be more complicated than that because you could just use somebody else's email address and use one of their cards if that's all it took. But that's part of what is still vague. In addition, at launch, this would only be for Visa and MasterCard cards, at least that is what the article is suggesting. So, so far, American Express and Discover, not part of it. Now, one of the things that also is vague is, is it only these seven big banks that are part of it, or is it all MasterCard and Visa credit cards and debit cards? My guess is that it is all MasterCard and Visa because if it was only these seven big banks, there's no way that they could hope for adoption. The article says that at launch, 150 50 million credit and debit cards would be enabled to be used through the system. They also say that this could be sort of the first step in sort of a larger strategy that some of the big banks are looking at where instead of having credit cards and debit cards where they have to pay a transaction fee on every single transaction, maybe they would use a digital wallet like this and eventually get to a place where you can pay straight from that digital wallet and it's coming out of your your bank account directly instead of going through a payment network with a credit card or a debit card where they have to pay extra. Even though PayPal has been around for a long time, it looks like the big banks see the real threat as Apple and Apple Pay. When Apple Pay first came out, these banks got on board. In fact, Apple gets a little money on every single transaction from the banks when you pay with Apple Pay. For a while, I guess that was okay, but now as Apple Pay has gotten more and more popular, now it is seen as more of a threat, especially because Apple has very deep pockets, have all kinds of money just sitting there waiting to be employed. If they wanted to go further into financial services, they're already talking about uh, doing savings accounts and buy, buy now, pay later, and obviously there's the Apple credit card as well. So with all that said, it's a little difficult to see how the banks think they are going to cut out a piece of this market and make their new digital wallet something that anyone wants to use. Apple Pay, extremely popular with Apple users, and it's sort of as part of the whole closed ecosystem with Apple. You kind of have to use Apple Pay if you want to pay with your phone, so it's not going to be so easy even to cut anything away from uh, Apple Pay for Apple users. And then you do have PayPal, and you've got Google Pay and Samsung Pay and some of these others out there as well. So what is the motivation for someone to use this new digital wallet? I'm not really sure. Maybe if you went to the extreme and some of these banks said, well, we're not going to work with Apple anymore. And so now, you know, you're not going to have your Chase card in there. You're not going to have your Bank of America, your Wells Fargo, all these big names. Well, then may maybe people have to go away from Apple altogether and that hurts their market. 
I don't know if these banks are ready to do that yet. Obviously, they could do some incentivizing of merchants and maybe lower transaction fees when things go through their digital wallet or maybe offer greater rewards for card holders when they buy through this new digital wallet versus other options out there. But all of these seem like they're gonna be tough to really get a foothold. So it's not clear at this point how far the banks have gone in terms of thinking of the long-term strategy of how to make people actually adopt this new wallet, what that motivation would be to add it to your phone or to use it online. They may be still at square one in terms of just making the thing actually work, but obviously that strategy is going to be something that is going to matter down the line if this isn't going to be just a big debacle of spending millions and millions of dollars for something that never actually gets used. So it will be interesting to see where things go from here. I would love to hear your thoughts about it in that comment section below. Otherwise, I thank you for watching. And as always, please go to proudmoney.com where we do credit card reviews, we talk personal finance, we talk deals, and all sorts of other fun stuff too. If you are not going to leave a comment or you are not going to go to the website, you know what to do next. Watch this video.